Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I'm Dr. Ramjad Ali in this video we are going to discuss a case study the benefits of the indexed bonds introduction dear scholars in 1997 the US Treasury Department started to issue bonds that pay a return based on the consumer price index these bonds typically pay a low interest rate of about uh, 2% so a $1000 bond pays only $20 per year in interest but that interest payment grows with the overall price level as measured by the CPI in addition when the thousand dollar of principal is repaid that amount is also adjusted for changes in the cpi the two percent therefore uh, in our real interest rate professors of uh, macroeconomics no longer need to define the real interest rate as an abstract construct they can open the new york times uh, point to the uh, credit report and say look here this is a nominal interest rate and this is a real interest rate professors in the united states and several other countries have uh, long enjoyed this luxury because indexed bonds have been uh, trading in other countries for years Of course making macroeconomics easier to teach was not the reason that Treasury chose to index some of the government debt uh, that was just a positive externality its goal was to introduce a new type of government bond uh, that would benefit a bond holder and taxpayers alike these bonds are a win win proposition because uh, they insulate uh, both sides of uh, uh, the transaction from inflation risk bond holders uh, should care about the real interest rate they earn and taxpayer should care about the real interest rate they pay when government bonds are specified in a nominal terms both sides uh, take on risk uh, that is neither productive nor uh, necessary the new indexed bonds illuminate uh, this uh, inflation risk in addition the new bonds have three uh, other major benefits so let's discuss the uh, three uh, benefits here in detail first First, the bonds uh, may encourage the private sector to begin issuing its own index securities. Financial innovation is, uh, to some extent, a public good. Once an innovation has been introduced uh, into the market, the idea is uh, uh, non-excludable. People cannot be prevented uh, from using it, and uh, non-reviver uh, one person use of the idea does not diminish uh, others people use of it. Okay, just as a free market will not uh, uh, adequately supply the public goods of uh, national defense and uh, basic research, it will not adequately supply uh, financial innovation. So, treasuries and uh, new bonds uh, can be viewed as a remedy uh, for that market failure. Second. second the bonds reduce the government's incentive to produce a surprise inflation after the budget deficits of the past few decades the us government is no a uh, substantial uh, debtor and its uh, debts are specified almost entirely in dollar terms what is unique about the federal government in contrast to most debtors is that uh, it can print the uh, uh, money it needs uh, the greater the uh, government's uh, nominal uh, debts uh, the more incentive the government uh, has to inflate away its debt 
the treasury switch uh, towards index uh, 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 that uh, reduces uh, this uh, potentially problemistic uh, incentive third third the bonds uh, provide data that might be useful for uh, monetary policy many macroeconomic theories uh, point to expected inflation as a key variable uh, to explain the relationship between inflation and unemployment so here we have main question that but uh, what is uh, the expected inflation as we have discussed in our previous videos as well how can we calculate the expected inflation Okay, one way to measure uh, is uh, uh, to survey private forecasters. Another way is to look at the difference between the yield uh, on nominal bonds and the yield on real bond. So this is all about the case study, the benefits of indexed bonds. So see you with another video. Ciao.